My name is David, and the chronological Bible reading for August 31st is Ezekiel chapters 16 and 17. God tells a parable in our reading today, a parable of a hopeless baby thrown out with no one to clothe her, defend her, feed her, wash her, or do anything for her. She is completely and totally helpless. A loving benefactor comes by, rescues her, provides for her in every way, gives her rich gifts, helps her to become beautiful, educated, talented. Eventually, once she has reached the age of maturity, he marries her. They have children together. He gives her lavish gifts that make her famous. He is faithful to her, provides her everything she needs, and yet she acts like a prostitute and doesn't even do it secretly. She does it in the open. She uses the gifts that he gave her to consort with people who hate him and gives what is rightfully his, her love, affection, and attention to others. But even worse than a prostitute who does it for money, she actually uses the wealth and resources that have been afforded to her by her benefactor and her husband to entice those who likely would have paid her. She pays them. And so she invites wrath upon herself. And of course, this is a parable of God and Israel, his chosen people. He made Israel into a great nation and she forsook him. She made alliances with foreign kings who worship false gods, and she began worshiping those gods herself. Before we as Christians become judgmental, the same is true of ourselves if we're really honest. We have been infected by the poison of sin. It draws us continually away from him. It competes for our affection. Everything we have has come from him. If we are hard working, our work ethic came from him. If we are intelligent, he made us that way. If we are of noble birth, he gave us our parents. The fact that we believe in him, it's because he made our hearts humble or our brains intelligent enough to know that we couldn't have just evolved from some other species like chimpanzees. We owe him everything, and yet we so often take our imaginations, our resources, our time, and our devotion and apply them to things that don't bring him glory. As we read Ezekiel 16, let's keep in mind we are no better than anyone else. Let us pray and remain humble. God, work in me. Make me holy. Father, I desire things that don't honor you. Change my heart. And Father, I ask that you would do that for all people. Despite all these things, even the fact that Israel was sacrificing her own children, the descendants of her God and benefactor, God says, yet... I will remember the covenant I made with you, and I will establish a permanent covenant with you. You will know that I am Yahweh, so that when I make atonement for all you've done, you will remember and be ashamed, and never open your mouth again because of your disgrace. We should be ashamed of the sins that we're guilty of. For some reason, we are enticed by testimonies when people share about how bad they were before Jesus got a hold of them. And we love to hear the forgiveness and the redemption of these stories. But some of us have a temptation to wish that somehow our own testimonies were even worse. Like we had done more sin. Sometimes we brag about how bad we were before Jesus saved us. And it shouldn't be that way. We should be ashamed of our sin. We don't have to magnify our sin in order to magnify his goodness, his grace, his redemptive power, the new life he's given us, or anything else. But let our focus be the goodness of our Most High Benevolent Father who loves us, who gives us every good gift and everything we need both for this life and for godliness. Chapter 17 is another parable 
a huge eagle with powerful wings, long feathers and a full plumage, went to one of the cedars of Lebanon, one of the tallest trees known to mankind, plucked off its topmost shoot, brought it to a place where economies were booming, gave it everything it needed, and as it began to flourish, it saw another eagle that was not as beautiful and not as strong and certainly did not love it and care for it, but it was enticed toward this other bird and began reaching its branches and its roots away from the source of its life toward this other bird who would not care for it. And it's a picture of Israel being placed under the care of Nebuchadnezzar. Now, Nebuchadnezzar had been used to cut off the city of Jerusalem to cleanse it of its sin. But he took the nobles, the people who were the most righteous, like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and put them in a safe place where they would be provided for. And the king Zedekiah revolted against the Assyrian Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar, and it cost him dearly. Clearly, the lesson here is we are to grow where God plants us and not to be caught up in the way the world sees things. I am sure there were some people in Zedekiah's cabinet who said, don't go to Babylon. You won't be free. You deserve to be free and choose for yourself what you want to do and what you want to to believe. But Zedekiah was tied into the wrong network. People were telling him what he wanted to hear. And when he inquired of Jeremiah and Ezekiel, they told him the truth. Repent, submit to this king, Nebuchadnezzar. But he rejected the word of God and it cost him everything. The same will be true for us if we reject the word of God in our lives. It will cost us everything. It's fundamentally important that we stop, that we listen. We ask God, what are you saying? Where do you want me? In regard to church, work, where we live, who we fellowship with, what we listen to, what we feed ourselves spiritually and physically. Everything we do, we must submit to him. God bless you, my friends. Thank you for being on this journey with me through the word of God in 2024. We'll see you tomorrow.